Hi there, it's Dale Felinto here, and um, this is the second video of the Blender 2.8 layers development. And the previous video was basically a teaser, we had no audio, no explanation, now I'm going to try to explain what was what I was showing there with the new UI, there's new things from the previous video, and also I'm going to show how to remake it from scratch, the whole layer organization. So we now have a layer, the render layers that we used to have in Blender, they're they they are used to to not only for the final render but also to organize the data to see in a viewport in in the future in, in the workspace. By default, when you just open a, a Blender for a file from Blender 2.78, you get every single render layer ported as a well as a new render layer, and all the original scene layers are ported as a viewport render layer. So that's what you see here. And as you can see here, the original layers which are called layers are now called collections and they're simply ported in this case it's one to six because I only have only had six collections visible in my old file very well let's now reorganize this file in a more a more a more smart way that not rely on on, on old legacy layer system so I will start by creating a new render layer so let's see me gonna just remove the two old ones by default, every time you create a new render layer, as you can, it comes already with a collection, which is a master collection. The master collection is basically a collection with all the objects of the scene, or rather, with all the collections of the scene and their respective objects. Okay. Um, this is basically what we want for this layer. So this is going to have all every single object. For this one, I'm going to only uh, have the geometry objects. I created a new a new layer, it comes with a collection, but I don't want the collection, the master collection in this case. I will just turn it off for now. But for now, let's start creating a new collection. So I go here. This is probably going to be in a better place in the future, but here, geometry. I want to join in the geometry layer or the monkeys, the cube, the um, torus, and, and everything. So we're going to create nested collections. So I'm going to add a new collection here. And let's do at least the one with the monkeys. And let's do one with the, um, I call plan, but actually what I was using is putting the plan in the cube and create even other ones with the, what's missing, what's missing, the torus, the donuts. Okay. The collection for now is empty, but I'm just going to select the object. You can go here to the Taurus one and add selected. Same thing for the so-called plan. Add selected. And for the monkeys, well, we got the idea. You got the picture. Select all of them and move there. Uh, in the near feature, I believe this is probably going to be supported by drag and drop, but that's how I'm doing for now. And of course, I didn't want the, this object here. I could just take three objects, select them, and remove from here. So they're no longer in this collection. I'm just going to add it then again. OK, uh, let's now turn off the master collection, which has everything, and just just see the, the, the objects that we added here. So in this case, I'm even going to unlink this, which is basically removing this collection. In this case, I couldn't rem I couldn't delete it because it's a master collection. But if I had created a new collection and I didn't want it any longer, I could just delete the collection and it's gone. Something that's also uh, I want to show you is yeah, let's do it here. So no, let's do the next one. So this is the geometry layer. I'm going to create now a monkey layer. So only the monkeys, the Susans. Again, we when you create a new uh, layer, uh, by default, the master collection is, the, is added to it. And one thing interesting about the master collection, as I was saying, that it has every single collection of the scene. So even though I was creating the collections for the other layer, they are automatically added to the master collection tree. Anyways, uh, we don't want it. Let's unlink. You can do it here, or you can do it here. And let's link. Uh, one of the existent um, collections, in this case, the monkeys. Bang. 
So now I have the geometry and now I have the monkeys. So one thing I was showing the other video is that I can have different selected objects in different layers. So now the selected objects and also the active object is a property of the render layer, which allows us to have in the future with workspaces to have different workspaces with different selected objects. So it can be you have model a workspace and you do some modeling and then well uh, you got a picture. And the other thing we can do, of course, you can set the visibility. And again, the visibility, I think it showed in the last video as well, the visibility is also tied to the render layer. So I turn off the the plan here, but if I go to the all layer, the plan is still visible. I can also go to the all layer and turn off all the geometry objects. Uh, 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 uh. Shame on me, they should be hidden. Why are they not? Oh, I just found a bug. It's probably going to be others. Oh, no, no, no. It's because the original layers, the original six layers, they're still in the file. Now it's time, I guess, to, to delete them. So delete the collection. Delete this collection. Basically, all the collections that have mesh already ported in. There we go. It's not a I can remove again. I can I can turn them invisible. So if I make them invisible here, they're still visible here because the visibility is per render layer. So we are also getting rid of the object uh, uh, selectability flag and the visibility flag because they're now going to be controlled per collection. Uh, I think that's all for this video. I'm going to show in the next video how to use the collections with the new render engine system. But I'll save it this file now and then start in a fresh new video.